Okay, around the table, is there alien life? Uh, I'm going to split the baby a little bit uh, in terms of my answer by changing the, the question a little bit to do I believe there's alien life? Uh, because, you know, from a scientific perspective, the null hypothesis is no. We don't, uh, you know, we don't know at, at the moment. But if I believe there is alien life, I'm going to say yes, um, given that, you know, the number of planets that seem inhabitable, even within our limited neighborhood, is high. The universe is really big, and I think evolution is a pretty powerful force, so yes. And no. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes, but if that's if you ask me if I believe, not if I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I think there's alien life, but I think when you get into the sort of debate about intelligent life, I think intelligent life will turn out to be quite rare on a cosmological scale. I think we'll find slime out there, maybe some simple multicellular organisms, but things that actually build alien megastructures will be very rare. Yeah, my, my take on it is that I, I think that it, again, it depends on what we're saying. If we think that life is very simple reproducing, reproducing crystals or molecules, that's possible, but not inevitable. Uh, I think the idea of there being things like us out there is extremely unlikely. Mm -hmm. And things like us that are around near us and at the same time as us. I think is pretty un pretty unlikely given what we know about life on Earth. But we, we only you know we only know about one one kind of life. So maybe our imaginations need to be stronger. Mm. I'm going to say yes too, but but with a caveat of um, are we talking about past or present or future as well? Because like you, you know, we've done a lot in 200,000 years, but we have only actually been here for 200,000 years as as humans. So. So it's sort of naive in a way to think that there would be something that is that has evolved at the same time and more or less the same pace that we would communicate with it in those 200,000 years as opposed to the 14 billion years more or less that we've been here. But when you think about how much we've done in 200,000 years, you know, we've gone from cave dwelling to, you know, robot building society in 200,000 years. That's actually quite a lot. So we've developed quite a lot as well. So, so yes, I'm going to say yes, but the question for me is more not is there alien life, but will we ever find it? Okay. Uh, I would say yes, but that's purely my hope more than anything else. I, if there is one thing that I want to happen within my lifetime is to somebody to find alien life. So for me, it's more coming from my wishful thinking and optimism than anything else. But I am also concerned. I think there is, there's more than what you said that we need to be worried about. It's not just that we have not been here that long, but we have not been technologically advanced long enough that we can advertise ourselves to the universe. That's only been in the last thousand years at most, where we've done anything uh, of the scale that we can advertise ourselves to the universe. And there's strong evidence to point out that we may not last very long mm. if we go at the pace we're going now. So if it is inevitable that civilizations rise and fall over a few thousand year time scale, then the chances that we will coincide with another civilization in our backyard becomes infinitesimally small, despite the millions of possible habitable planets. So that's my dilemma at the moment. I think everybody said everything <laughs> I want to <laughs> say. Um, I would like to think, yes, there is life out there. I don't know, my, my issue would be how you would define what that life is. I mean, again, I think like, like Matthew, and, and, and it's whether or not it's intelligent life is, is debatable, and whether or not we are in the right time frame to find that, and whether or not they and us have the technology or the desire to actually try and find each other, because they may not, they may, may have no inkling of life out there and they may not care so I think I think there's all that to take into consideration but we'll talk about that more later yeah. well one of the things that uh, Enrico Fermi the Italian physicist said so well, if there are aliens where are they mm. and we've all kind of said well maybe we're not in the right time space or they they aren't clever enough or developed enough but you can imagine that if we manage to get over the various humps we're going through now and we carry on for another few thousand years we will be filling the universe with our probes well i guess we'll be spending out spaceships and trying to find stuff or saying hey we're here come and join us um or there's good eating here come and join <laughs> us um so why 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 haven't they done that? Well, the, the, the Fermi paradox we, yeah. is one of those conundrums that's 
if you're if you're a science fiction writer like I am, it provides infinite grist for story ideas. You can just come at it over and over again, and you can find so many angles, so many possible resolutions to the Fermi paradox. Um, I mean, I, one of the things I think about is that if, say, you, you, we think a few thousand years ahead, what if our understanding of the universe, which is such a complete state that we realize there's actually no need to go beyond our solar system. What if we decide that every other solar system out there is just boring? Like we've, <laughs> we, we've, we've sampled enough that actually we don't need to go and see the thousandth and one exoplanet because they're all basically the same. What if, it, what if the, you know, beyond a certain point, alien life becomes very sort of hermetic, quite content just to sort of sit in its own sphere and just think? There'd be no need for contact. Perhaps that's a resolution of the Fermi paradox. Mm -hmm. But I think as humans, we that's one of our sort of, um, that's in our makeup, I think, is we, we are naturally very curious. And, and even even if it is, they're not, you know, a thousand and one exoplanet is boring, you might think, ah, but the thousand two might not be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you don't need to turn over every stone on, every, on a beach, do you? Once you've but sampled a few pebbles, you, well, you, okay, you, I, get, I get pebbles now. And <laughs> But you're in the yeah. minority because 99% of the human population wants to turn that other stone over. That, that's human nature. We really are extremely optimistic, despite what the, you know, people might think that we're all pessimists and we want to kill each other. But actually, by nature, human beings are extremely optimistic. We are always hoping that there is a pot of gold under the next stone. So I it's a bit like Pandora's box, you know, we want to know what's there, yeah. Yeah. what could be there. Yeah. But I, th I think there's, I, I, there's always often a bit of arrogance, I think, when we talk about this type of thing. You know, where are the aliens? Why are we so special mm. that the aliens want to come see us? I mean, there were a lot of answers to Fermi about this. I mean, one of which is this idea of the zoo hypothesis, right? That mm. they're there, but they have the means by which to prevent us from, from sort of detecting us. But one of the other answers is, well, what if they're sort of aware of us, but they're just like, well, why bother with <laughs> this group? Mm. So, you know, as humans, being, you know, we're, we're anthropocentric and we just assume that they must want to come and talk to us, so that's one possible answer. They just don't care about us. I suppose well, it's the practicalities as well. Of, you know, the distances could be massive, and that brings in time issues as well. And then how do you cross sort of time and distance? You know, so maybe they did try and talk to us back when we were cavemen. Maybe mm. they didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I guess one of the problems is that would we, you were saying, yeah, we should be sending out probes and we'll be doing this and we want to investigate. But, okay, so we've just gone to Pluto and the New Horizons satellite was, probe was sent 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so they've just been putting pictures up on Twitter of them all cheering 10 years ago when the <laughs> rocket went up. And now they've got these unbelievable pictures. Okay, so you can just, I can just about imagine investing that kind of length of time. But in a probe that is going to take, you know, decades, centuries to get, and then we're not going to get the information back if we're still here for more centuries. I mean, what's the point of that? Would we really invest so much time and money, do you well, think? We, well, 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 we, we, have the, we have the radio horizon. Let's not talk about probes. Let's talk about the radio wave horizon, which is, what, 80 years, 100 years old now? So 100 light years, mm -hmm. that's how far our information has traveled. One way of looking at it is, okay, there's no uh, intelligent life coinciding with us in space and time in the 100 light year horizon. Yeah. Or they have not advanced, or maybe it's not possible to detect radio waves that low intensity that far out. Because that's as far as we have advertised Well, we, only actually, we really only know what's going out to 50 light years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's even smaller, isn't so, it? Yeah. So why, why, why is that? Well, because you, you need to allow the, the return time as well. Oh, okay. You know, we've been broadcasting for 100 years, but if aliens got our signals 50 years ago, we'd only now see their spaceships arrive. But that's assuming that speed of light is a limitation, yeah. and I, well, I don't necessarily buy that assumption. And we can get to that later, but, yeah. but I got to You've got to know that the, the actual signal itself is deteriorating as it goes, so we don't actually know how, how far it will go. As well. well, it yeah. will because travel infinitely. It will travel infinitely. No, no, but the, 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 the actual the actual signal itself will deteriorate so much it will that deteriorate. it won't be able to be picked up anymore. Well, well, the, 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 the information like content as well. Kind of obscure signals. But yeah, who knows? So yeah. What, what, what's <laughs> the weakest signal we think we can detect, and for the furthest away, with your your fabulous instruments? Mm -hmm. How um, far away can you detect this this mobile phone? Do you well, know? so the the telescopes that there are now, radio telescopes that there are now um, in so Green Bank in in the US. Um, and probably Parkes Telescope actually in, in Australia, they can, they could detect the equivalent of an airport radar 
signal uh -huh. four light years away on a planet that was four light years away now. Okay, so a radio, that's pretty intense, yeah, you, is, a radio yeah. signal from a... Yeah. Um, but we've got them, so that means if there was a star four light years away with a planet on it, they could see us within four years and we get the message back in But in, but in, in the lab... Do we need a relay of, of, you know, like a telescope or something <laughs> that's four, four light years away? <laughs> 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 on the nearest star and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the lab, though, we have single photon detectors. These are not um, science fiction objects. We can detect individual photons. Yeah. So effectively, all we need is a repeating pattern of single photons and we can detect that. This, ha this haven't, hasn't been mounted on a telescope or anything like that, but the technology very much exists. If we can do it in the lab, somebody else could very well put it on but a telescope. But if you put it on a telescope, if you put it on a telescope, it would just get kind of bleached out by the sun, wouldn't it? Wouldn't well, it kind depends of on where out? you put the telescope. In the dark. In the <laughs> dark side well, where you point it, I suppose, yeah, is okay. the criteria. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, no, right. Stick the telescope yeah. on the yeah. other side of the moon and you well, can it's in Well, it's in light half the, half the month. But, but uh, you know, aren't we, you know, we think it, radio and photons, it's all part of the electromagnetic yeah. spectrum. Aren't we in danger of being a little bit parochial? I mean, aliens might be using, I mean, at the very least, they might be using gravity waves or neutrinos or something we don't even know about yet. Mm -hmm, yeah. I mean, I, I always think this, when we get really sort of bogged down in discussions about radio propagation, light propagation, it's kind of like worrying whether they can detect smoke signals <laughs> because they're just not going to give a toss about or, or they might, or they might. Well, if they're actively reaching out to us, then they might sort of dumb down their technology to the point where we stood a chance of comprehending it. Well, I mean, isn't that the but thing with SETI? I mean, the whole, the, 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 the spectrum that they're looking at is the 21 centimeter hydrogen line, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and the idea is they call that the watering hole, right? The mm -hmm. idea that that's where everybody should meet because every intelligent species should recognize hydrogen as the most abundant element in, in the universe and, and we could detect that that type of shift but but they, they may not and, and they may be like oh well that's for dummies <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna we're gonna yeah. you know, be looking in this in this but other it's like if they're having a private conversation between sort of super civilization over there and, and one over there they're not going to be arranging things so that we can cheerfully intercept the signal yeah. they could be using some completely private sort of uh, telephone exchange between them. Yeah. Well, when yeah. you talk about the limit of speed limit of light, for example, and saying, oh, we need the signal to come back, or when you're talking about electromagnetic communication and stuff like that, what um, I really think is, okay, we don't understand 90% of the universe. And the 10% that we do think we understand, we kind of maybe understand a little bit. So how can we actually imagine that we know how aliens are going to be communicating? Um, and, and saying, oh, they haven't found us. They probably have. They're probably walking amongst us, but why would they advertise themselves? What's the probability? Say, probably, <laughs> they're a very tiny I'm probability. Saying, I'm saying Are you telling us something? No, no. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, I wouldn't. Not in this location, but the thing is, um, if they were, if they were, they're certainly not going to be buzzing hillbillies. That's that much we know for sure. Why not? Why not? I mean, if you want to know, if you want to advertise your presence, then you put huge, great, big, big metal dish in the sky. Oh, you write in the sky, we are here. And we know, we know, you know, then it's all sorted. We don't have any conspiracy theories. Nobody's going to be arguing about it. I really it. like the idea of space graffiti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, do, you know, you know, if we were... But, you know, I think there's a, there's a good point in that if they wished us to know of their presence we already would that, that, oh yeah because they would have the energy i mean no matter whether they're here or whether they're transmitting to us there would be it would be an unambiguously un un resolved question by now why That's do you think that though because you're assuming that they're more intelligent yeah. than us yeah i think they'll have been around for a bit you know with this side you know when we get into sort of evolutionary time scales i i think any um civilization out there that's likely to be interested in communicating with us will have been around for millions of years longer than us and they will have you know Dyson spheres and all nonsense like that but they will, they will be able to just hit us with such a powerful signal that there would be no we wouldn't have to build specialist equipment to detect it we just see it well isn't there the possibility of incommensurability incommensurability in terms of the ways in which we might communicate with them if they're a, a totally different life form they may already be communicating with us but we don't have the faculties mm. to, to to pick it up um i mean i i think about the, it's called the, the safer wharf hypothesis which i'm sure many of you know the idea of, of sort of linguistic relativity that our language defines and and if their language is such that we just cannot comprehend it then maybe they are we just 
Well, we're not really looking for language. We're not really looking for intelligent communication. At the moment, all we're looking for is well-defined patterns in the electromagnetic spectrum. That's all we're looking for. We don't care what it means. We don't care about interpreting it. We don't care if it is a language signal or if it is a radio signal or whatever. We are scouring the electromagnetic spectrum looking for repeated or ordered patterns which cannot be naturally generated. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's not it anymore though, is it? Because that, that's a passive way, which is what SETI's been doing for a long yeah. time, but now there's METI, uh, which is the messaging on uh, uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And, and lots of people are against this. You know, Stephen Hawking is one of them that, that's very much against, you know, should we be actively sending out messages mm. Mm. into space? So, so yes, there's the passive way, which we've done for a long time now in terms of scouring the, the M spectrum. But now we're, we are actively putting messages out there as well. And so I think it was the, um, the anniversary of, of the WOW signal. Mm. Um, Arecibo sent out 10,000 Twitter messages. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> right. Good luck with that, yeah. aliens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so they pointed it at where, where they got the, the WOW okay. signal <laughs> and then sent out 10,000 Twitter messages. But that's <laughs> Twitter <laughs> messages. I mean, I guess what I keep thinking about is you brought it up. If, if, there's, if there's life on other planets and it's gone through phases of evolution, we know we've had mass extinctions so what's to say that they've not had sort of phases of mass extinction and then we're just going to miss the window mm. so i think it's interesting that though most of us said it's very unlikely they're going to be around as smart or smarter than we are at the same time and in the same place we then skipped over that and all started <laughs> talking about what they're here they're walking amongst us yeah. you know why aren't they doing it so what the, the simplest answer is that they aren't there they aren't there now in somewhere that we can see them they might be in another galaxy far far away but they're not in our part of the galaxy at a time when we can see them because getting to being a spacefaring civilization is in fact really really difficult because you're, you're right yeah we've, we've done it in the last really we went from living in caves most of us or know what you know 5,000 years ago, we had started to develop agriculture. And then, hey, we've got people living in low Earth orbit. That's fantastic. Yeah. But that was not inevitable by any means, given the three and a half billion year history of life oh, on yeah. Earth. You yeah. know, it could it's have like gone very, very different. one Odyssey thing, you know, where they came and they spoke to the Stone Age people. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. they did that. Maybe yeah. that's why we're here. But, you know, we don't... So the, the probability, the, the possibility is, and I would argue the probability is they ain't, they, they ain't here. They're not there. We're but talking into the void. But you're talking about intelligent life yeah, capable yeah. of communicating the with The kind us. of things we've just been talking life. about. Life? That's, that's a different <laughs> issue. But I mean, mm. I, I just think it's interesting. There's a, perhaps it's just because it's more fascinating to talk about what they might be doing rather mm. than actually saying, well, no, there's nobody there. You know, <laughs> we're we're sure. shouting into the void. <laughs> so it's just to think there are, if you think about, um, going back to the Fermi paradox and things, even a really conservative um, estimate of it,